Hey guys, in this video, I would like to show you the latest progress on my Tetris gaming device project. Uh, what you're seeing right now is the second breadboard version of this gaming device, and it's a little bit different from the first one I built last September. Uh, first, I replaced the uh, the eight five nine five shift registers with a source driver and three LED sync drivers. Also, I've included an accelerometer and the vibration motor. The accelerometer gives you another way to control the game and the vibration motor provides you with some physical feedback when you're playing the game. So after I tested the entire system I went on to design a PCB in Ego and ordered two copies of the board from Advanced Circuit. So here's one of them. Um, showing you the footprints for all the ICs and the LED bar graphs, some buttons, a couple switches, a program programming headers, and a piezo speaker. Here is the back of it. So the other one, so over here I populated it and designed an enclosure for it in SOLIDWORKS. So before putting it on, here's what it looks like under the PCB. I've taped a two cell, um, like a modified two cell LiPo battery pack on the back and, and I also moved the piezo. So you can see the footprint for the piezo is actually on the front but I moved it to the back just to save some space. So let me put this all together. Oh, and before that I'll have to attach the LED matrices. So here's the first one. Should be fairly easy. And the second one. There we go. Now we can put on the top piece and should all just fit together. Okay, finally. <laughs> on the back we have to put on four screws. So these are just four M3 screws, eight millimeter. Um, yep. Okay, last one. The last thing we need to do is to put on the two switch caps on the bottom on the here. So that's the first one. That's the power switch. The other one is the music like sound switch. 
So Okay. There we go. Uh, actually, let me tighten it up a little bit. Over here. Let's turn it on then. Okay. And also turn on the music. And we'll start the game. And you can pause the game. So, in order to turn on the vibration motor, you can pause the game first, hold down the drop button and the bot the down button, and you hear that noise from the vibration motor, that means it's activated. So right now, when you resume the game, whenever you clear a line, uh, the vibration motor would make some noise. Let me do that a couple more times. Yep, that's the noise from the vibration motor. And any at any point in the game, you can pause it and turn off the vibration motor just using the same combination. And it's turned off. To use the accelerometer, you can use this switch and you can now start using the accelerometer. Oops. <laughs> um, so yeah, just by rotating it to the left and right, you can control the position of this of the piece. Um, I haven't yet included a way to control the orientation of the piece using the accelerometer, but that will be added later in the software. So yeah, and it's still working just fine. Oops. <laughs> okay. There we go. And to turn it off, you just do that. Oh. Too late. We're gonna die pretty soon. So let's just stop right here. Let it die. And the same game over that we had when we built the first version. So yeah, and then we can restart the game. Well, actually, like, we can turn it off now. So, as you can see, there's some programming ports on the bottom, and the leftmost one is for the AT1085, and these two are for the AT Mega 328. This one, the 1x6 header, is to you for you to use with the FTDI breakout. For example, this one is from the Spark Spark, Spark Fun, and you can plug it in like that. You can start programming it. And to program the 1085, you can use this setup, or if you have an um, AVRISP programmer, or, or if you're like me, just using Arduino for this, you can load up the Arduino um, ISP sketch and start programming your 801085 and your 328. And below the programming port, there's a charging port. So here is the other end. And you can plug it in very easily, just like that. And the other end it would connect to your, there would be another cable connecting the DIN uh, plug to your LiPo charger. And you can start charging it. So that's basically it. My final version, well, there will be other improvements to it, 
but <laughs> this is my Tetris gaming device. Thanks for watching. See you next time.